title that I gave it, which was a Two Heads Better Than One, is that uh, I'm thinking about collaboration as an engaging um, idea. I see a lot of people that I've worked with over the years um, in the room as well who really buy into this. Thank you. I got it there, right? Hi, I'm Gloria G. Newlis from the College of Staten Island. And we've had our hybrid classes running about five years now. We started out pretty small with maybe eight sections of hybrids, and there were five adjunct faculty who went through extensive training. As of fall, we will have 26 faculty members, including six full-time faculty members, and we're running closer to 40 sections of hybrids. Most are our first year comp class. So I thought it would make sense just to show you a little bit of what my Blackboard site looks like, because this is for first year composition. One of the things I've noticed with new instructors to hybrid is that managing the instructor's time is really a challenge. Because teaching online, you can become tethered to your computer. And it turns that four hour a week class into a 24-7 class. So there have to be ways to streamline the way that you're interacting with students. So this is, let me just scroll up. I find that I color code all of my classes so that I remember which one I'm in as soon as I open. I also find that less is more. So I really limit the bells and whistles and where students are going to access information, where they're going to deposit information. What I find extremely helpful is making better use of my announcement page. For my students, I explain, the announcement page is like me standing here and talking to you. That's me in front of the class. But it does serve another purpose. When I read through discussion board posts, I had to learn to sit on my hands, and, and I mean that quite literally, because I would have the computer on and I'd be doing things, and oh, there's a new post, let me see what somebody said, oh, that's so interesting, and I want to jump in and join the conversation. But if I do that, I'm not giving the students the opportunity to develop a conversation that's of interest to them. And learning to sit on my hands is pretty much the same lesson I had to learn when I was in front of the classroom. Be comfortable with silence. Wait, wait. Somebody will jump in to fill that void. You don't have to do it. So I ended up just posting one or two responses on the discussion board just so that my presence was there. You know, you'd see my picture pop up and know I was there. At the end of the week, I started to post these kinds of observations. My observations from online class November 6th. And I would just, you know, as though I were talking to them, reading through your responses, and I'd share my own response to what they were saying. But you'll notice that I have some names that sort of pop out in blue. And what I discovered was I could quote what my students have said and weave together this kind of narrative overview of what came out of their discussion. Students get so excited when they see their names on the announcement page in blue. I was quoted. And they would come in and say, I was quoted twice. Did you see that? <laughs> I, I've been on a roll. I've been quoted three weeks in a row. And it was really affirming to the students because not only did it show that I was engaged in their discussion board, but that they have something of value to say, something that's really worth showing everybody and saying, look, this was really great. We should keep talking about this. But it also helped me to streamline how much time I'm spending with the online discussion. 
So I'm reading through all of their posts and I read throughout the week and I just copy and paste into a Word document snippets of what people said. And then at the end of the week, I go back, I look, I pull a few out, and I compose this narrative. Doing something like this is maybe taking me an hour, an hour and a half, not, not longer than that, many times much less than that. But it's still shorter than my sitting there reading everything, responding to groups. So this was one way that I found to manage my interaction. The other way that I'm using announcement page is to really remind students of pieces of their upcoming assignments that they need to pay a little closer attention to. Because as I'm looking at their discussion board posts, sometimes I realize, oh, a lot of people seem to have missed what, what I wanted here. So I better go back and give a little bit more information. So announcement page does that. And then I always email the announcement page. So that's been very helpful. Those are just two ways I use announcement page. I want to go to discussion board very quickly to show you <coughs> how I'm using discussion board for students to really have greater responsibility for managing their own learning. And it's right here that we always have forums for our discussions and each new reading that they're doing that has a form, I move it up so that it's higher up. But Q&A is always the very first forum. And the Q&A tells students, there are 25 of you and there's one of me. And I'm an early morning person. <coughs> so I'm on Blackboard at five in the morning. You're on Blackboard, most of you, midnight, one, two in the morning when you get home and realize, oh, I'm going to go on Blackboard. If you have a question, I'm not going to be awake. And so I won't see this until the next day. Everybody has to pitch in and help one another, monitor the Q&A, make sure that if you see a question, if you know the answer, you step in and answer it. I've left the Q&A really for students to help one another. And so early on, as students are posting questions and other students are responding, I will weigh in then to say, that was really good advice you gave. You said exactly what I would have said. So that they can trust that I know what people are saying and if somebody says something wrong, I will weigh in to say, well, that's sort of right, but it misses the mark a little bit. So let the students manage the Q&A. I give very specific guidelines. Nobody is to email me or message me with a question about class. I won't answer it. My response is, gee, this is a great question for the Q&A. Please post it there. <coughs> and I just really sort of sound like a broken record with the students. That's a good place. Put it on the Q&A. And eventually, they stop emailing me and use the Q&A. So letting students take greater responsibility for helping one another with the Q&A, using um, the announcement page to post global overviews, also emailing or messaging students when they've made nominal contributions to discussion board or to face-to-face -face class, just to say that was really such great insight you had I so appreciate your participation. Any kind of encouragement like that through Blackboard, the next post from those students, they just take off because it's this kind of reaffirming. But it's also freeing for me. Uh, just to let everybody know, we're going to make sure that everybody gets a chance to talk. Um, but I, we were going to continue the conversation in the birds of a feather at lunch. So you can go down, grab your lunch, and come back up because we want to. Uh, kind of um, really go deeper into all of these, uh, you know, really fabulous ways of um, managing our online classes. So, um, yeah. Sue, you want to talk about it too? Uh, you can sit there if you feel more comfortable, by the way. You don't need to. Oh, I'll just stand here then okay. because yeah. um, 
Hi, my name is Sue Rock. I'm teaching at the College of Staten Island, and I've been involved in teaching hybrids for uh, since its inception. Five or I think it's a little bit more than five years. Um, a hybrid course gave me the idea that oh, maybe I will then move on to teaching an online course, and then I won't have to travel up here, and then I won't, have to, and I can teach in my pajamas. And, um, but I really like the idea of the hybrid. How many people in this room are teaching hybrid courses presently? Oh, so maybe we're using, uh, I'm using, going to use language that you wouldn't even know of, or you probably have a lot of questions about the hybrid format. Um, coming to a presentation where five people are going to talk, I said, what could I talk about? But I have a really great director. Bill Bernhardt, who said, why don't you talk about the classroom time, the face-to-face -face time of this hybrid component? Because it's really exciting to develop a hybrid. Oh, I can put this in, I can call Gloria, I can call someone else. But what do I do when I'm in class, if I'm shoving all these things online? And the students have to do this and have to do that. What will I do in the classroom? So I, I concocted a list. A, a, a short list that maybe I can talk about. Students are comfortable in a traditional environment. And although the internet and online is someplace that they are becoming so, so comfortable in, school is school to them. And they have also had 12 years of being in a classroom. So that's the first thing that I think goes into um, the importance of being in the classroom. Um, I teach writing. Well, sometimes I teach reading, but I teach writing basically. And I think that it's crucial for me to get an authentic writing sample from my students because how do I know it's them? Which is one of my questions all the time. Huh? Wait a minute. Why does the online writing sound like this and the in-class writing sound like this? So what I do is I'll print um, a post that a student has posted online in response to an assignment. And I'll bring it into class, and I'll sit with the student, you know, can you open your notebook, and let's see what we're doing here, and what we're doing here, and something doesn't do, well, my sister's in college, too, you know, and she's helping me. Well, okay, and then we talk about what help is, and what too much help is, and we go from there. So I do like the idea of being in the classroom um, to get authentic uh, writing samples. Another thing, some people teach because that's the way they earn their living, and that's wonderful. I teach because I love to teach. And part of what comes through in the classroom for me is my personality. And it may not work for 25 students in the room, but generally I have found that students are receptive to what it is that I do. And what it is that I do is I don't sit. I come behind you, I tell them, if I walk behind you, keep doing what you're doing. I'm just the busybody. I want to see what you're working on. Um, and so my posture, my lame jokes, my um, feigning ignorance on something that they might make reference to. Uh, somebody made reference to Frozen, to Pinto, was it you? Yeah. And um, I, I, in my class, I had said a line from Frozen, but I have never seen Frozen, and I didn't know it. And they were all laughing, so I stopped and I said, it was a line that was repeated over and over. Let it go, let it go. Let it go, right, I was telling them, we were talk, but we weren't talking about, we were talking about a writing, um, uh, some sort of writing technique. And I was like, let it go, let it go. And some people, they started letting, what, what is it now? You're doing Frozen. I didn't even know what it was. Okay. So I learned. That was my one thing I learned that day. Um, <laughs> so my posture, my attitude, my sitting with you, they get used to that really, really quickly. And a lot of the exit comments are um, that they felt they got personal attention in class, which is valuable in a writing class. Um, the next thing that I wrote down was my... my immediate impromptu conversations with them. So online, it has to sit and wait. But in the classroom, I can I can have a sidebar. I ask them to step out into my office, which is the hallway of whatever room I've been assigned to. Right? Come talk to me outside. Um, I usually say uh, three people. 
can I speak to you after class? And so I had that face-to-face -face time with them. I know that we have face-to-face -face time available, but there's a difference in person, I think. But the most <coughs> crucial for me is that um, I can assess when a student is lost. You know the look that comes on the student face? Either it's a pretend at knowing what's going on, or you see the eyebrows going together, or the little frown lines in the forehead. So let me tell you about Cosmo this semester. Cosmo is in a hybrid course, and um, most of my students, as you see in the um, flyer, are in the hybrid course, well, maybe 10 of them, because they saw it was a two-hour course. Yippee! All the other English courses are four hours, and this is only two hours. So Cosmo has this dejected look on his face, because he has now found out I explained the syllabus to first class. I explained what absences meant. He missed the online, so he now has one absence, and he's dejected. He misses again, and I have a sidebar with Cosmo. What's going on? You signed on and explained about the four hours we have to meet in class on Monday, and then we meet online. And he had a death in his throat. And I see this on him, and I tell him, okay, Cosmo, he hands it in his first paper, and I say, Cosmo, the paper's not a success. But if you stick with me, stay with me, I can tell, because I have his writing sample, I have his discussions, I have his online work. I ask some questions about readings. I can tell you're going to make it. And he did, and he's doing really well. And then this is the part, the personal touch in my classroom that I think comes through. Um, it, it may come through in a hybrid, like when I wrote so what on a student paper and the student said to me that they weren't very um, happy with my sarcasm. It was the so what technique in writing to push the writer forward. But when I do that on a discussion board, I'm not able to explain it. But if I come to you and I say, oh, see where I have so what on that, and that personal touch. So, the face-to-face -face time for me, I don't think I'll ever be an online teacher, a totally online instructor. I, I think that the hybrid is the forum for me, and I'd be happy to take questions later on when you come back. Thank you. Great, too.